business. So like I mentioned earlier, we'll be looking at introduction, uh, evaluation, we'll be looking at the concept of the equity value versus the enterprise value. We'll look at the valuation using the multiple approach and we'll be looking at the comparable company analysis approach, the precedent transaction analysis approach, and then the discounted cash flow model as well as weighted average cost of capital and then basically how you present valuation results in a football chart. So first of all, um, when we say valuation, we are just trying to estimate um, a value of a business and um, a number of reasons back why one would want to do that, why an analyst would want to do that. Okay, so first of all, um, one of the reasons that will trigger um, the need for evaluation is when you want to sell a business. So if you want to sell a business, you cannot just come out there and say, I'm quoting a particular price. It will, it will require that you go through proper processes and then come out with a value, a reasonable value. You get it. So you do valuation for um, if you want to sell a business, you will need to value the business and then estimate the value of the business in financial terms. Also, if you want to raise money, if you raise, want to raise an additional capital for the business, or even a seed money, you require that you do a valuation. For seed money, what you do is called a pre-seed valuation. And uh, for company that exists already, if you are doing additional capital raise, either through IPO or through um, other means of capital financing, uh, you want to value the business, okay? Because uh, people who want to who be invest in your company or who will show interest in your company will want to know the size, the value, okay? How much or let's say the value of your business in financial terms. Likewise, like I mentioned, if you want to list on the stock market, if you want to um, raise money through issuing of shares, which is through an IPO listing, you would need to value the business. So for all the companies listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange, the MTN, the Farmog, the Ghana Commercial Bank, I mean, all the over 35 stocks listed, before they came to the market, they were valued by um, professionals to determine how much the business uh, um, goes for. Likewise, um, if, if the business is going bankrupt and then it needs to be liquidated and, and to determine maybe the final value of the business, to, to I mean, make sure all balances are well checked, you need to value to know the status of the business, to know that whether or not after selling of the asset, there'll be something left for the equity holders. Another reason is that if you are acquiring a business, I mean, you will need to, if you're acquiring a business, you will need to um, value that business. You can't just wake up and go and say, oh, I want to buy a business. How much do you want to buy the business? How much do you want to purchase that business at? So the purchases, purchasing consideration, I mean, it will, it will require that you value the company to determine how much the company should be um, sold at. Okay? And then you can make a decision on that. Another reason why you would want to value a company which is uh, one of the main reasons why we are here learning our valuation is um, to make an investment recommendation. So uh, if, if you want to make a recommendation or if you want to choose an investment, I mean, to be able to know which investment is good, which is not good and all of that, you need to value the company to determine whether this is a good business that if I keep my invested investment in, I'll be better off or, I mean, the opposite. So, for instance, um, there are a number of companies listed on the stock market, um, about 40 of them. And then if you want to invest, you want to know which one will be best for you. And uh, valuation will be required for you to make a better decision.
and also for internal business decision making. So if um, you need to value the business to know whether the business is enterprise value is moving up or is coming down, all of that. I mean, to add to um, 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 your decisions, to be able to know maybe what we should do next to get the business going in a particular direction. So basically, if we want to perform evaluation, it's either we are doing because we want to sell a business or we want to raise additional money or we want to list on the stock market or when the business is going bankrupt, it needs valuation. Or if you want to buy a business or if you want to make an investment, you would need to value the business to know whether it will be a good investment or a bad investment. And also internally, businesses would like to value them the uh, value uh, the finance professional would like to value the business to know whether the business is really increasing in terms of value or it is decreasing to kind of help their decision making. So basically, these are some of the I mean major reasons why one would want to do evaluation. Now, valuation most of the time we see it. Uh, it's an art. I'm sure if, if you follow and list, someone will say that, okay, valuation is an art. And then you know, someone will say that oh, valuation is a science and all of that. So I want to establish that valuation is a partly art and a partly science, right? So um, valuation is, a, is an art because it involves um, bringing together all sort of information and making some sort of assumptions to be able to make projections and put, I mean, to, to derive the business's value now based on probably its future cash flows. And then valuation is also a, a science because you follow um, um, science procedure, procedures from historical data point of view to learning lessons from the historical databases to try to use it to predict the future trends of those numbers. So that's why we say valuation is partly at, partly at because you combine several conditions to make an assumption for the business. And then it's a science because, I mean, you use historical stuff, you combine the data, do a lot of modeling, form hypothesis and all of that in your valuation processes. Yeah, so valuation typically would involve, I mean, analyzing the financial history of the business and the prospect of the business, their projects and the assets. Uh, it also involves forecasting the future operations of the business, the future projects or some future, I mean, um, um, corporate actions that they, they, they intend to take. It also involves analyzing the industry. And it also involves analyzing the economic environment in which the, 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 the business operates. And so if a business is in Ghana uh, and they are trying to value it, your, some of your assumptions may vary from valuing a business in the United States because the macroeconomic environments are, are way different. They are not the same. And so the economic environment, you analyze them to also help you shape your assumptions in a particular way. Likewise, you also have to look at which valuation suits the business in which uh, you are going to be value, uh, valuable. There are a number of valuation approaches, okay? There are a number of uh, valuation approaches and um, every every company or industry what's best um, fits it. But um, generally, um, the discounted cash flow model we will get there, which is one of the many valuation approaches. It's one of the widely used valuation methodology or approach for, for several um, companies. Yeah, so that is basically about trying to forecast the business's financial statement in the first stage and even in the foreseeable stage, and then discounting it to the present terms and then try to use it to determine the business, the business's value. So yeah, so like I said, valuation is typically a sign because 
we use the historical trees. We try to glean insight from the historical trees, like trying to compute the ratios, trying to do a bit of statistical and regression analysis. And then it is an art because um, you do a bit, you combine conditions and events, situations and circumstances around the company and around the company's both internal and external environment. And you factor all of that into your assumptions. So this is the difference. This is why we say it is partly art and it is partly science. So how do we value a business, right? How do we value a business? I mean, um, so valuation actually involves, um, it's actually a, principle, a finance and accounting principle and um, a lot of tested and proven approaches has been, uh, have been developed to value businesses, okay? So yeah, I hope you sit down. So there are a number of businesses that have been, there are a number of um, approaches that have been tested, improving or have been accepted as uh, uh, as better ways or better mediums or methodologies of approaching and evaluating the company for whatever purpose you want to evaluate it for. So to be able to tell the value of a business, right? To be able to tell the business, uh, the value of a business, or the, I mean, let's say the net worth of a business, to be able to tell the net worth of a business, or how much a company costs, like the way you will be able to tell how much a product costs, how much does an entire company cost. You can pick it from the cost side of it. As in, from the cost side, we are trying to see, if you're able to assemble all that the company or all expenditures that were incurred in putting up the company or in bringing the company to that status, then you can say that, okay, well, that should be the net worth of the value of the company. And so if a company, let's say, a company spends about, or the formation of a company, involved the use of about, of about $1 billion, then you can see that, well, since $1 billion was spent in putting up the entire company, then the value of the company is $1 billion. So that is where you want to view valuation from the cost side of things or using the cost approach. Another way is trying to value the business based on uh, the market, okay, its peers, okay, really trying to say that, okay, since this company is similar to this, trying to claim the size or pick up the size of a company by its competitors, by its relative companies, similar companies of the market. So an example is um, um, if you want to value MT in Ghana, and then you have, you are performing valuation on MT in Ghana, and then you have um, valuation or you have the value of Vodafone, you have value of Air Delta, you have value of um, Safari Cone, you have value of the other telcos around. You can be able to say that, okay, since MTN had this, and MTN is valued at this amount by these comparable similar companies, can be able to derive a relative value, okay, for Vodafone Ghana. Another example can be if I want to value an asset, let, let's say I want to value access bank. Now, access bank is not yet valued, but GCB is valued, and um, um, ADB is valued, Society General is valued, Stan Chart, Stan Big, all these ones are valued. And so by these comes, it is called practically we say they are comparable companies, similar companies. So we can be able to put all the numbers together and derive a relative value, a value that can be relative, uh, a relative value for assets bank Ghana. Okay. So some of the things we can look at is, for instance, 
by the trend of their top line, their financial performance, the sizes of the business, their branch network, their customer base, their depositing structure and all of that, you can be able to pick up a value. You can be able to derive a value for assets bank by studying the, the, these comparable companies who are already in the system, okay? And then um, under the same market approach, you can also be able to value a company based on precedent transactions, okay? Historical transactions. Um, I'm talking about capital transactions that has been done in the industry for a period of time. So, but then th there is a difficulty with this. It's not really a popular one locally. Um, so you can look at transactions, okay, of that nature, transactions of that nature, and use it to be able to tell the value of the company in question. So that's the precedent transaction approach under the market approach. And then the third one and the most popular is the discounted cash flow approach, where you try to value the business by forecasting their, uh, their cash flows in the, to the future at the first stage and then forecasting it at the second stage into the foreseeable future or uh, in perpetuity. And then discounting it to the present steps to see what the value of the company will be as of now, based on the, the company's potential to generate a certain kind of income or cash flow, right? Yeah, so um, this, in other words, it can be said that, okay, if you want to value a business, by the ability to estimate the, the business's cash generating potential, okay, by the ability to estimate that into the foreseeable future, and discounting them into the present, we can be able to tell that the company is valued at this amount. So these are the popular and the, the widely used valuation methodologies that we have around. Either seeing it from the cost side of things or picking it from similar companies in the market or the same company trying to um, forecast their cash flows into the future. And then um, discounting it to present terms. Now, for pra um, in practice, um, you can see a result of evaluation in this way. So for one company, you can perform different types of valuation on them and they show. So typically evaluation outcome will be presented in this way. Well, let's see, the comps may be showing um, a, a price at the base case, at the best case, as in the, your, 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 your upper assumption case and then your lowest assumption case. And then for the precedent, for the DCF, for the um, D, DCF, as in with the highest assumption case, and then the 52 week range, lower and high. So, Typically, we don't recommend that you use one valuation methodology. So when you use about three of them in value one company, and then you put them together and use the average, you are more, you are more, um, 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 let's say, your margin of error will be lesser than using just one valuation approach to value the company. So at this stage, uh, I want to know if any of us have a question. I will take it and then we continue with where we have ended up, where we just ended up. So if you have a question, you can just raise up your hand or you can unmute yourself and then um, you, I, I, would, I, I will get you in to speak. Hello, all right. So all right. I presume there are no questions. So we'll continue with what we're learning. We've been studying valuation so far. We've looked at uh, the rationale behind valuation. Why would someone perform evaluation? We have looked at uh, the various methodologies in valuing 
a company and then we have looked at practically if you look at a valued company how it will be presented so if you have seen a chart like this it is called a football field chart if you have seen a chart like this then it is a uh, a summary of a, it could be a summary of evaluation for a particular company that has been performed. Now, I want us to look at what we call an equity value and an enterprise value of a company, right? So, first of all, when we talk about enterprise value, enterprise value is basically the net worth of the company, right? When you talk about enterprise value, it's basically the net worth of the entire business as stated the, the overall. I mean, the whole value, as if you are selling the business, how much it cost or how much the purchasing consideration for that business. Yeah, so that's the entire business's value. So how much MTM cost, the value of entire MTM, the value of asset bank, the value of GC, the value of farm work. The entire value you estimate is called the enterprise value. And the equity value, on the other hand, is the value of shareholders. Is the value that shareholders will receive if the company is sold. And so um, if the company is sold off, um, the value that comes to the traditional owners of the company, they, that is what we call the equity value equity in other ways is like owner's value something like that now enterprise value is both a combination of uh, equity value plus your debt less any cash available so if you want to calculate the enterprise of um, um a business the entire value of a business it is basically the equity value plus the debt minus cash. So the equity value are the traditional owners of the company. The debt is every other additional capital through um, debt means you have added and then less any form of cash you have available, right? Yeah. Oh, one will also say that the enterprise value can be the net present value of every business, the net present value of every business of, of their future cash flow. So typically, if you are calculating an enterprise value, you would want to use the market value of the equity, the market value of equity, and the market value of debt of the company. So either you can do a MV, market value of equity plus net debt, or market value of equity plus debt minus cash, where net debt is debt minus cash. Debt minus cash is net debt. So for the market value of equity, you are just talking about the market capitalization of the, um, of, of the company. So definitely, if you are valuing an, a listed firm, for instance, market capitalization of GCB Bank, right, what is currently about 1.2 billion cities, a little over 1.2 billion cities, or 1.3 billion cities, around that amount. So that is one portion of it. And then the market value of the net debt and so you check their financial statement and look at their debts, and then you subtract the cash component, which is the cash and cash equivalent from it, and then you can find the value of a business. And so if you go and pick MTN's financial statement right now, and then you know their market cap, once you can be able to calculate the, the net debt, which is the debt minus the cash, then you can be able to find the enterprise value, the value of MTN grant. I believe this is this is quite simple, right? So enterprise value, which I said is the entire value of a business. Uh, sometimes someone will say fair value, or someone will say total enterprise value. I mean company value is the, the entire value of the business or better still, people suggest EV. So once you see EV anywhere, it is called 
enterprise value. Enterprise value. So for for um for the discounted cash flow model, what you are trying to do is that you are trying to um forecast the business's cash flow potential cash generation ability. Okay, narrow down to the cash flow itself of the business ahead for about five or seven years, and then finding um the growth in perpetuity and then discounting them to present terms. We discount them because of um, uncertainties, and then you can be able to find um, um, the value of it. If we have done basic business finance, you know, it tells us that the value of an investment is the cash flow, the potential cash flow from the investment. And so if you are buying T bills, okay, the value of that T bill is the summation of the potential and its returns that you get from that T bill. If you are buying a bond, it's just the summation of the potential income that can come from the bond or interest that can come from the bond. So the value of a loan is the potential interest on that loan. The value of, uh, of a stock or a share is all the return in terms of dividend, in terms of capital gain that can come from the stock. So the same way if you are valuing a business, the value of a business can be all potential cash flows that can be generated from the business discounted into present terms. Discounted into present terms. Um, I don't know if anyone has a question. I saw someone trying to speak. All right. So let's continue. So the, the same principle, the value of a business is every cash or the cash flow that the business will be generating, okay? The value of an investment is the return, is the interest you are going to be getting from that investment. That's it. So the same principle is what we are applying here. So if you are doing valuation, that is what we mean by using the discounted cash flow model. So we are trying to calculate the future cash flow of the business. I know someone who's 